swimming has just always really fascinated me. This idea that a person or animal moves its body in some way and that causes the water to move and they go in the other direction. We were really at the zoo just as a family. We just moved to DC, so we wanted to see the wonderful National Zoo. And we just were watching the sea lions swim. The sea lions are very playful, they're very engaging. And I started thinking, there's something interesting here that I could explore. My field of study is experimental fluid dynamics. By looking at the natural world and understanding how nature solves problems, we can think about future technologies and how we can implement these natural solutions into the man-made solutions of the future. The way that we're choosing to do that is by creating a robotic sea lion flipper. Up here on the actual animal. I think in the water flume it would be positioned like this. Sea lions get their propulsion from their arms or their fore flippers. Because they don't swim with their tails, they don't produce the wake that we expect to see. We call that hydrodynamic quietness. The hope is that in the future, we could design vehicles that use those principles to efficiently move through the water. Instead of having a propeller, we could have an underwater vehicle that has some variation of four flippers so that you could maneuver quietly or make it harder to detect if stealth is your mission or perhaps we could create research vessels that can go a really long time on one battery. Today we are at the Smithsonian's National Zoo. We are here to help Professor Lefwich and her team study the way that sea lions swim. I absolutely think it's important for us to collaborate with other scientists and researchers because we have a captive population here that we can get hands on and we can study. The main thing that we are interested in while we're at the zoo is capturing video data of the sea lions performing certain maneuvers. They'll take their arms and clap them into their bodies, and that produces a jet of fluid in one direction and the sea lion goes in the other direction. There we go, that's a nice one. The cameras are angled at about 90 degrees. We assemble the calibration target, and that calibration is later used so when we have a clap in one of the videos, we can actually trace the sea lion flipper through the clap and we know the points in 3D. The real hard work comes once we get back to the lab. And we have to look through that video and find the motions of interest to us. So then we can take that data and use it to program our robotic flippers. I'm really excited about just this next step of getting this robotic flipper into the water. It's something we've been working towards for almost a year now, and I have several students that are really invested. I know that they'll be really proud when we get it up and running. I don't think that anyone can predict when inspiration will come. I am constantly seeing problems that nature has solved, and I want to know how. We go to the zoo a lot still, and almost every time we talk about that day that we met the sea lions for the first time and how now mommy studies them.